line is to tie the rudder onto the boat because we have lost two rudders <laughs> for different reasons, and they go to the, they sink. So they're and they're hard to replace. Again, these boats are older. This was probably built around 1965-ish, something like that. Um, the boats are hoisted up on that hoist, and we'll go down and I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Um, they're hoisted on these rings, and there's four in the corner, and it's got a hoist sling. I'll show you how to use it in a minute. Uh, make sure it has a throw. Of course, everybody has to be life jacketed, and before you leave, remind me, because I get spacey sometimes and I forget stuff. Uh, you have to sign a waiver, a release waiver for the club. Um, just check all your gear, make sure the uh, the outhaul is working properly. Main sheets all treated and so on. This is a traveler, and what this does is, um, if you're new to travelers, it adjusts how far the boom will, will slide one way to the, to the next. And you can loosen it if the wind gets heavier and allow the uh, whole rig to slide all the way over further. And that's what you want to do when the wind's really pumping out there. For most conditions, this is what you want, just uh, centered like this. Um, make sure it has a boom bang. We've got an extra boom bang in there, which makes me put this in front of the boat. But this one does have a boom bang. Cleats here and cleats right there. It's not super strong. These boats aren't set up for heavy duty racing or anything. They're just a four to one boom bang. These things are somewhat unique to day sailors. They're called barber haulers or in haulers. And what they do is um, when you rig the boat, you put the, if I'm using words you're not familiar with, just stop me and I can explain them. There's so much vocabulary in sailing. When you've been around it, you forget. Um, but the, the jib sheet comes through this. So the jib seat on the port side comes through this ring. And what you do is you pull the jib in and it allows the boat to point a little better. If you don't want to mess with it, it's not necessary to use. It's just a better, a little better performance on the boat. Uh, make sure you have a bailing bucket. It's got a couple bumpers down here and a paddle. I like to check the tanks too. There's uh, tank plugs in the front here. And we've got one right here, and we've got one right there. And make sure you've got a stern plug. That's in the back of the boat where the rudder will go. But the boat looks to be uh, properly equipped and ready to rock and roll, I think. Last year we purchased, they're not brand new, but we purchased new, newer sails. The sails are pretty nice, and that's, we've got two sets of new ones, and then we bought that other boat got decent sails so before if you've ever if you've been on these boats you might remember that the sails sometimes were a little blown out and old um, and then the sling is right here so if you can kind of look at all this boy Robert if, if you can edit that video down maybe you could send it to everybody sure would that be possible maybe yep because I've already gone over like 20 things in, in about a minute and a half so. yeah <laughs> so much uh, the slings the, the long, it's got a center ring, it's got two long lines and two shorter ones. The shorter ones go up front. The long ones go to the back corner. So we can go ahead and put, put the sails on now, and then I put the sling on, and then put the boat in the water. Okay? So why don't we take the sails out of the bag? I think it's a separate jib and a separate main. Some sails are what they call loose footed, which means that they, you just, Connect it here and you connect it back there on the bottom. This is not. This has to slide along this track. Start with the main sail. Yeah, notice they're rolled up and not folded and not pushed in there or folded in half. You want to try to keep them like this sort of a little bit loosely rolled in case there's any water on them. Or not Dacron and so on. They're all Dacron. They've got a, you can tell the back from the front. By looking at the, the feature, the this is called a rope pull, and it's a sewn-in piece of rope, and it'll slide inside this groove here. And I'm gonna squirt some lubricant in this, but it slides inside the groove to the end. But it also slides inside here and up to the top of the mast. Um, you can, so you can tell what's the front and the back because John has the back, but there's no rope bolt going up the sail. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's got a rope bolt for the bottom, mm -hmm. not for the top. 
So what we'll do is we'll start with the Slide it along. It's helpful to have two people doing exactly what's happening here. One person can sort of guide it down. And... When it gets to about right here, about a, about a foot and a half away from the where the boom meets the mast. Here and pull it down until the bottom's even. This one has a securing pin. You see this right here? It's got a little securing pin. I would use it. Some of the boats don't have them because they are, it's already in a groove, but if it has it's kind of nice. The, uh, there's a little brass clip on the end of the red line. That's the end of the outhaul, and it hauls the sail out. So about this point, we're gonna clip the outhaul onto that grommet right there. I'll send a little more down to you. And this is a thing that I was uh, mentioning to some of you. I, had a, I have a thistle also, and then this broke a couple times ago, and I tried to sail less. Thursday without it working properly and what happens is the the sail becomes rounder and more powerful and it'll cause the boat to heel over a lot more and it becomes a little less dangerous so if you're a little nervous out there you feel the winds a little more than you want to handle tighten this as much as you can get the thing really tight it'll even make a little shelf in the bottom it can be so tight but that'll be a good thing because it'll make the sail flatter and less powerful and then I don't, I don't normally uh, raise a sail here. I wait till I'm in the water. It's just a lot easier. At this point, I like to have the sail start. Here's the head of the sail. Okay, so we got two halyards. The black line is uh, for the main sail, and then we got a halyard for the jib. And if you're not familiar with the term, halyards are used to raise and lower sails. It's a special rope for that purpose only. If you trim a sail, it's called the sheet. Don't ask me why, it just is. So this clips on like this. Keep track of this. Drop the sail. Can I go ahead and uh, have a couple of you guys do it? Sure. Let's do it. I'm going to take this down and take it all back apart. I'm just putting a little knot in here so it doesn't slide through there and go wonko on this. Okay. You can lift the boom and slide that. Oh yeah. Does it go high on that? Wiggle it back and forth.
nice work. And then he attached the... That thing to the... This guy? Hell yeah. Or is this the one that we're actually pulling on? I don't think that's the cord because the one we had had a hook on it, didn't it? It's on the clip? Uh, yeah, it had a clip. So, so it must be this one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you have wrapped. wrapped around? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Looks oh, good. good. That's always embarrassing when you're. <laughs> when you get out there and then try to pull the sail up. <laughs> <laughs> People will leave the jib just rolled on the deck at the end of the day, but at least for a while, for the, as long as everything's so nice and new, let's uh, go ahead and roll the jibs up like this. If you haven't rolled the sail off, go through that too. Uh, okay, now you're, these are going to be locked on to trailers or after sail school into June. One of these boats, probably this one, because we're going to bottom paint it, one of these boats will be in the water, so you won't have to even launch it, just go out and unlock it. And um, I don't have enough keys for everybody. I wasn't expecting everyone. So I have, I, have, I brought two keys. Um, is is it the one. same key as last year? No. Okay. Th this one is, but I've got new locks and stuff. I just haven't got things. But you'll have a key that unlocks it. For... Everybody see how this works? It's a, uh, it's got a little screw in thing here, and we can leave this on the jib when we get done. So it's got a little hand side over here. It's got a little it just screws in, and this part's threaded. And these snap on. You notice it doesn't have. Jib sheets on the sail, so we'll have to fix that too. Everybody get it? I'll let you do the rest and we'll be done with this. I just kind of.
keep it you know, from flying around while you're doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> and how you up there if you like to climb on? or pain is a it's so bad, but if you have to, you can stable. Uh, one good lesson is uh, don't step on sails on boats. It's really slippery. Okay. Right there on the <coughs> right up there. We often have color coded, these are called the jib sheets that pull in the jib, and they're color coded. The green one's on the starboard side. If you don't know your starboard and port, your right hand side, or you salute the star, that's a way to remember it. You drink port, the left <laughs> hand, salute the star. Um, when you're on the starboard side, pulling everything in, you have the right of way if that's worth anything. Basic rules of sailing starboard has right of way over a boat that's on port. So if you're coming from the port side, you don't have right of way. Right. If you're coming from the starboard side, if there's a boat on your starboard side, they have right of way. Is that correct? If you're sitting on this side and the sails are filled on the opposite side, mm -hmm. you have right away. Your starboard. Oh, yeah. The other half across your starboard. Windward side. over leeward. Okay. I mean, leeward over windward. The leeward boat has right away. So if there's two boats sailing on the same tack, like this, mm -hmm. the one that's farthest away from the wind has the right away. Okay. If you're both on starboard tack, it can't be starboard over port. It has to be leeward. Damn. Well, gotta yeah, climb the mast. The most unfortunate. I lost one, and see that tower out there? Yeah. You tied, bring the boat up to it? Tied up to the tower <laughs> and lean the mast over. <laughs> you don't want to be careful about okay. those. I'm putting one on this side, I'm going to put the red one, it's going to go through okay. on the other side with a figure. Right. You don't have to do that. Okay. 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 Well, you can't do anything. Right. You know, well, not much can happen after that. Slide this through the feet and then do a figure eight on the other side. Like this, yeah, just slide right through there. Do a figure eight on the other side. Um, I, I do it like just you just put it on the oh, back side. Oh, it's just on that side. Yeah, you do ah, like that's that. why. It looks like an eight. Yeah. Right yep. And then it goes through. Yeah. So I was trying to include two reps, huh? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Luke John. You know, it's been a long time. <laughs> I know. There it is. But I have to take it out every time on my 27 think... because oh, yeah. to get the. The sheets through the blocks. Oh. You know, so I have to every time. It should be a stopper knot at the end of it. I call it a stopper knot too. So there's a figure eight at the end that would prevent the whole thing from getting out. Okay, so these go on the little ring up there and ring back here. Board system. Okay, this is this is a little odd. I don't think I've seen another boat that has it quite like this, but it's got a handle. Can anybody see? Attached to this handle is a. Um, is that better? Yeah. Attached to this handle is a uh, a little post. It's got a square tip to it, and it fits inside the the, the keel or the centerboard. So when you lower this handle, you lower the centerboard. Hmm. And then if you raise it, obviously you push it back up. So up is up and down is down. That's good to remember because sometimes, mm -hmm. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. sometimes we forget to do that. Um, but it's got a little locking system. You see this little pin thing right here? Mm -hmm. If you could see this, you can. It goes around and it's got a little notch right there. And this pin is set in the notch to keep the centerboard up. 
So you have to put the center board up before you take the boat out of the water. And after you get in, so you'd be doing this in the water and things may move around a little bit. But you push this forward just a little bit to kind of release it. And then it lowers. But it wants to lower more than I want to lower it. This has to go into here. So you're in the water and you have to slide the tiller underneath the traveler. If you put it over the traveler, it'll hit the boom when you try to steer. So tiller underneath traveler. And then you'll pull it forward and you'll shove these down. And then after you do that, we want them tied on so we don't lose them, although these would probably float. Okay, now I think we're ready. The, the club has um, a bunch of dollies over by the hoist system there. So would somebody go get a dolly and bring it back? Just a little bit. Okay, good. And then if you pull this all out of the way, then you're good and safe. Um, with the centerboard not down, mm -hmm. what John could do is if he walks slowly that way, the boat will flip around. You always want to nose the boat into the wind at this stage, and the wind's coming like this. So if you can just uh, walk it this way, John, and We got two things going on now. The trailer needs to be taken back. You wouldn't leave it here. And then we got to drop the center board and raise the sails. And the boat's ready to sail. Is well, there? We'll take the uh, lifting sling. Yeah. Take the what up? The lifting sling has to come off, and we usually just store it inside. It's got a little shelf in the inside there. Okay. And then it comes down. It probably comes down pretty fast. You like that part, it makes it more stable. Huh? Yeah. What's that? That part makes it more stable. Like you, you know, like I'm going to make sure that happens. <laughs> Somebody pulls, so oftentimes the feet will actually be on the on the deck up here. Have you and Kathy signed up for sales school yet? He's signed I up. I did. Oh, okay. I'm actually going to be out of town that week, but he's uh, signed up. Did you sign up for the center board class? Which class? Center, center board? board? It's going to be taught in these boats. That's why I'm asking. It's a, oh. Might be a good experience. Do you, know, do you remember? If it said it didn't need a boat, I signed up for it. Oh, yeah. It had three choices. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. This is one of you. I what my boat. primary choice was, though. I'll have to look. Yeah, mainly they mentioned you know not having your own boat, and the other one said bring your own boat. That's probably all the laser classes. Yeah, the lasers. Yeah. Okay, just pull it. Okay. Yep. Go, go easy, son. Sure Let me take it out of here. No, uh -huh, you're doing it right. It should work. Okay. Go slow. We can just take this easy. You ever heard of Mick Lube? No. This overpriced uh, silicone lubricant that I've got in the other boat. I, I'll get some and squirt those. Oh, it's the actual? Okay. Yeah. Then I was so suckered I bought McPolish or something like that. McPolish? McPolish for $40 a pint. It's a fancy sailboat polish. Wow. Better be good. Yeah. Better make me faster than anybody. Yep. 
Doing great. Just go slow. Doing great. To decrease the friction on the side. Is it? On the and then you put it on the bottom. And yeah, it's supposed to. Probably got some Teflon kind of stuff in it. Right now. How much would be a new set of sales like that? How much would that cost? Oh, I'd say about for the main engine, maybe $1,300 or so. Really? And then uh, for the spinnaker, another $1,000. Uh, yeah. That was a good deal you got? Oh, we got these used. So last year, Memorial Day, this guy who's a real hotshot day setter guy who won the regatta came up and he had two these two extra sets of sales that he wanted to sell. And I think he charged like $300 hmm. a piece. Yeah. Yeah, that is good for us. Yeah. yeah, they look good. When you get toward the end right here, it starts to pinch. Yeah. And you have to make sure that uh, the boom bang isn't on or anything that will keep the boom down. You're doing great for part. This little tight at the end. Yeah. That pulley seems like not a very good yeah. line or something. It's got, it's like that's that weird down I'm going to pop on and give you a little bit of help there. Okay, I'm getting on. Okay. Yeah. Maybe three inches or so. Show me the life jacket. Thank you. 